First of all, I would like to thank Lifespan.io, especially Keith and Elena, for um, giving me the opportunity to present our work. Um, today, I will be um, discussing some of our progress and our challenges in addressing one of the seven arms of the damage um, in, in cells. That's remediation of mitochondrial DNA mutations via allotopic expression. Um, this is our current team. Uh, this picture was taken about a week ago. And um, today, uh, I'll, I'll discuss most of the research, uh, results that I'll discuss today were done by Caitlin. She's in the audience, and uh, Bhavna. And um, uh, some of the later uh, results that I'll discuss, uh, safe harbor expression results, were done by Carter. Of course, the project was um, seeded by Aubrey de Grey, and it was uh, initially headed by Matthew O'Connor, or Oki, and he's still a, a vital part of the project. Um, and uh, let's see. So you've all probably uh, learned this in high school biology, mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. But in terms of introduction, I just want to highlight a few features uh, that are unique to this organelle. Um, the um, mitochondria generate 95% of your energy um, uh, in, in the body, and um, they are unique in that they, uh, in addition to the nucleus, this is the only organelle where you'll find uh, DNA um, or genetic material uh, in eukaryotic cells. Um, other than plants, of course, plants have in plastids too, but mammalians they have only in uh, mitochondria. Um, the, this um, DNA is 16.5 kilobase pairs in humans, and uh, it in fact has uh, the machinery to um, synthesize uh, proteins within its matrix, in that it encodes for 22 tRNAs and two uh, ribosomal rRNAs, um, but it also encodes for uh, 13 polypeptide chains. Um, that are all part of the OxFOS relay in, in, uh, that's uh, housed in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Um, now, the, on the other side, the disadvantages of placing such a genetic material within the powerhouse of the cell is that they are also subject to um, the side products that are generated as um, a process of this oxidative phosphorylation, and they um, uh, tend to accumulate mutations with time. Also, the, uh, the organelle itself, uh, there are replicative errors um, and inefficient uh, DNA repair mechanisms uh, compound this mutation accumulation, and um, thereby there are several diseases um, that, um, that result as, as uh, um, due to mitochondrial mutations. Um, over uh, 500,000 people are diagnosed with mitochondrial di diseases worldwide, but this statistic is somewhat underreported in that uh, before you can even diagnose that it's, it's a disease due to mitochondrial DNA mutation, doctors have gone through a slew of tests eliminating many other things. It is believed that one in 200 are actually born with a mitochondrial DNA defect. Uh, how does this manifest? It manifests as uh, uh, um, different, you know, um, as, uh, you know, this is a girl who was diagnosed at 16 years of age, but then she represented, like, a speech impediment, you know, a vision impairment, balance, muscle weakness, cardiac hypertrophy. Here is just a list of various diseases that, that result from mitochondrial DNA mutations. Some of them are um, due to um, specific, specific gene that are mutated, uh, or some of them are due to um, global mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, so what is our strategy here? Uh, the, the current line of treatment is that there are, um, uh, they are generally um, small molecules uh, that are often um, antioxidants, and they address only the symptoms, uh, and they do not address the root cause, that is the mutation itself. So uh, our goal is to 
um, place backup copies um, of these 13 genes in the nuclear genome so that we can protect them uh, using the nuclear protective factors, try to synthesize them in the cytosol, and then um, retarget them to the, the correct location within the <coughs> OXFAS relay and make them functional. Um, this is called allotopic expression. It is not a, a new theory. The, it has been around for quite a number of years. But the, um, um, the problem is that people have always addressed this uh, at, at a minimal level. If you think about it, um, the, the codon usage, um, or there, there are distinctive differences between the um, uh, codon usage in the um, mitochondrial genome versus the nuclear genome, and uh, there are very specific changes with respect to methane and, and tryptophan and stop codons. So you do have to address this when you when you transfer them to the nucleus. You you would have to make those codon changes to make them uh, to to achieve a functional uh, protein translation within the cytosol. However. Um, uh, as I will discuss, uh, yeah, recode uh, for nuclear cytosol translation, that is a must. But we went ahead, uh, one step ahead, and coron optimized to facilitate the expression, and I'll discuss with you how, how these results turned out. Of course, there are several other features that need to be addressed too, like you know, use of pro uh, appropriate uh, mitochondrial targeting sequence and the and the role of various five prime and three prime UTRs that, that can regulate their trans transcription and translation. But I will uh, I will not touch upon this. Uh, in all our studies, uh, we we placed the ATP five G one MTS upstream of all the sequences and that way targeted them to the mitochondria. And um, I'll, I'll touch upon a little about uh, how we can regulate the gene expression um, in the context of safe harbor expression. So um, what is codon optimization? Um, uh, it, it optimizes to various uh, features, uh, uh, in this case, to the nuclear genome. Uh, if you think about it, the, it is actually a heterologous expression. You are trying to express mitochondria, that is a prokaryotic genes, from a eukaryotic context. So uh, for some reason, uh, the field has kind of um, uh, neglected this. It was actually proposed 30 years ago by Peter Negley, but uh, subse subsequently uh, nobody um, kind of paid attention to it. So. Um, I, I also want to point out here that we did not coron optimize with specific um, uh, uh, features or factors in mind. This is uh, global coron optimization, um, and we did this through a company, GenScript, um, and um, it addresses, uh, of course, coron usage bias, uh, the GC content, um, many many features, uh, the mRNA secondary structure, uh, you know. Uh, crypt, cryptic splice sites and so on and so forth. But what we did was we did analyze, so we synthesized um, all the 13 genes, so the 20, uh, 25 constructs, we were unable to synthesize just for one gene, the ND6 gene, the recoded version. Uh, for some reason, um, it was very difficult to synthesize. It is, um, it is the only protein that is uh, encoded on the light strand. And um, you know, we were just not uh, able to synthesize that. But 25 constructs we synthesized uh, with the CMV promoter, the ATP 5G1 MTS, either the recoded or the coron optimized version with a flag tag and the poly tail from AGH. So um, um, here is just a, an analysis that we did afterwards. Um, so the inner wheel corresponds to the amino acid um, composition for uh, nuclear genes and the mitochondrial genes. So these, these two, they, they are identical. Uh, but what you want to appreciate is the um, codon usage, um, how it differs between the recoded and the codon optimized versions. Um, many of the, um, the codon optimized versions uh, prefer um, certain, uh, especially for the most hydrophobic amino acids and the charged amino acids, there is a significant uh, change in them. Here is just another uh, plot of it. This is the, rel the relative synonymous codon usage uh, um, uh, heat map. And uh, uh, you can appreciate that the, uh, 
the heat maps are quite different. So here, the light pink, uh, the, uh, a value of one in, would indicate no bias, and a uh, value uh, less than 0.6 uh, would indicate they are less preferred, these codons are less preferred, and uh, a value of over 1.6 is more preferred. Um, with this, how does this fare in, in our, uh, um, in, in the laboratory? Um, so we um, expressed these 25 constructs in HEK293 cells, and what we observed is that in every case, um, the uh, coron optimized version yielded a, a positive product formation. Um, so, so there are a certain genes that can be expressed under recorded conditions too, just like ND3 or COX1 or ATP8 to a certain extent. But predominantly, all, all of the coron optimized um, uh, constructs expressed very well uh, under transient conditions. So um, transient conditions is all good, but how for, for um, constructive gene therapy, you need to express them in, in, uh, under stable levels. So we generated stable lines for all these 25 uh, constructs. Um, and we found that the mRNA levels for the coron optimized constructs were, again, uh, higher in each and every case. This is in comparison to COX-10, which is a nuclear encoded and mitochondrially targeted gene, uh, a, a, a good comparison because it's also from part of the OxFAS relay. Um, and, um, um, and this is in comparison to GAP-DH. Um, uh, 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 so um, a housekeeping gene. Uh, but what, what is important to note here is that the optimized uh, constructs are uh, at the most equal um, or below gap DH. This is just to uh, show that we are not flooding the system with too much um, uh, foreign mRNA. Um, how does this fare uh, in, in protein expression levels? Uh, we observed that um, eight of the 13 uh, genes could be expressed stably. Uh, mostly, uh, many of the complex one genes can be expressed, uh, COX-2 from com complex 4, and ATP8 from complex 5. Um, so uh, next, we went on to test the utility of these uh, stably expressing genes in disease models. Um, so we obtained a, a patient's hybrid line uh, from uh, uh, Richard Rodenberg uh, in Netherlands. So this is a patient where um, there is a single base pair change from a G to A at uh, mitochondrial DNA 8529. What this does is that it introduces a premature stop codon in the ATP8 gene, and, and there is uh, no ATP8 protein as a result. Um, but it's, it's uh, in the mitochondria, there are two regions where um, proteins are translated uh, in a bisestronic fashion. One is ATP8 and ATP6, and the other one is ND4L and ND4. So in this case, ATP6 levels were also considerably down. Um, so what we did is we co-expressed ATP8 um, uh, and ATP6. Um, ATP8 is the codon optimized version, whereas ATP6 is the recoded version. Um, because uh, what we found is that under stable conditions, codon optimization did not quite improve ATP6 as we wanted to. Um, and this ATP6, uh, recoded ATP6 has been reported earlier. Um, in fact, we obtained this construct from uh, Dr. Marisol Koral Dabrinsky. Um, and now when you co-express these two pro proteins, what you can find is that it reconstitutes, so this is the null line where complex five is completely gone, this is BN page, um, uh, and it, it, when you express ATP8 alone, it restores most of the complex five activity, this is INGEL ATPase activity, but if, when you co-express ATP8 and ATP6, it restores even the um, uh, dimer activity. And um, if, you, if you did uh, ATPase um, uh, activity by the PKLDH method, you can restore up to 55% of uh, the ATPase activity. Again, uh, 
uh, aerobic respiration is uh, restored. Um, so the, because the patient cell lines are predominantly dependent on glycolytic uh, activity for their ATPase, you can see that um, their, uh, their glycolysis is very high uh, compared to wild type levels um, here. But when you put both ATP8 and ATP6 in it, it comes down to almost wild type levels. Similarly, oxygen consumption is restored in the, in the uh, patient lines when you co-express ATP8 and ATP6. And again, uh, this is just to prove that um, um, now these cells can grow in oxfos restrictive media such as galactose. Uh, so we can recapitulate many of the functions that are lost uh, in these patient cell lines. Now, just, this is just to uh, retrospectively, we went and expressed our ATP8 and O ATP8 in the patient cell line. This is just to show that there is um, increase in mRNA, and in fact, even though there is a significant R ATP8 mRNA in the system, um, the protein uh, is produced only in the uh, codon optimized context. Um, so, um, ATP8 is working in our hands, so we went ahead and tested the same strategy in, uh, can we extend this to other genes? Um, so I'm going to tell our success and also some of the challenges that we are facing with the ND1 uh, context. So again, ND1, um, uh, this is also again from a patient. Um, we, we, uh, we got the patient cybrids from uh, the trans lab. Uh, in Australia, and um, again, this also results in a premature stop codon. It, it uh, reduces um, a protein that is normally 318 amino acids to uh, just 100 amino acids. And um, complex one function is severely disrupted in these cells. Um, so we, we stably express the recoded or the codon optimized ND1, and again, at the RNA level, uh, the coron optimized um, ND1 fares much better. And at the protein level also, it is only the OND1 that gives any uh, protein product. Um, uh, the recoded one, uh, we were not able to detect much protein product. It integrates into B and page in the monomers. Uh, so um, um, we, we synthesize this protein in, in with different tags at the C terminus um, because um, what we observed is that while it can integrate into the monomers, uh, complex one predominantly occurs in super complexes and that's where it's most active. Uh, we were not able to see uh, the integration of this exogenous protein in super complexes. So we were thinking that maybe attaching a flag tag is not the ideal one. We tested with HA, but HA, again, we were able to see in the monomers, but we failed to see anything in the super complexes. Um, and similarly, when we did an angel assay um, uh, for complex one activity, this is wild type where you can see the activity, but you know, with the OND1 flag, um, there is hardly anything. There is some, but not, not to the extent that we would, we would want. Um, now, we are currently synthesizing a no-tag version of it, uh, so maybe if it is just the tag that is influencing uh, super complex assembly, then maybe that will resolve it. But it is also possible that uh, some of the super complex assembly factors are disrupted in this line, and so we, or we may need further engineering um, for this uh, gene to be uh, functional from, from an allotopic point of view. Um, so it's also important to note that uh, ATP8 is the smallest protein in the uh, 13 proteins, and it, it is uh, also one of the proteins with um, uh, lesser um, uh, transmembrane um, uh, spanning regions. Uh, so um, as the complexity increases, we may have to uh, adjust the design to our design, and uh, we, would, we might have to optimize it further. Um, so, um, 
since ATP8 is working in our hands and how we can further it to, to the clinical setup, uh, um, what we are trying to do is prove the technology in an animal model. Um, so there are very few animal models available for um, mitochondrial DNA um, uh, diseases, uh, partly because they are also vital to the function. But there is uh, an ATP8 disease model available. It's called the FBB mice. Um, it's not a null mutation. Uh, it is just a, oh, a substitution mutation. Um, uh, what we did is we expressed um, the recorder and codon optimized versions here. You can appreciate that codon optimized version is better. It reconstitutes into the complexes. It uh, regains viability on galactose. And our idea is to place this in, um, in uh, a safe harbor context. Uh, and in fact, we are, um, we are uh, generating a transgenic mouse uh, through applied stem cells where we will place this. Uh, optimized ATP8 um, in the H11 locus um, and uh, tr uh, 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 assess for rescue. Um, in light of time, I'm just going to say we have validated uh, the safe harbor expression uh, in cell models in, in the laboratory. Um, so we introduced um, uh, a safe harbor lo locus introducing the 5C31 and BXB1 site at the H11 locus, and we introduced the OA8 gene at this locus, and it can be expressed stably in, in, in these cell lines. Um, this is my acknowledgment slide. Um, uh, all, all, uh, of course, this is our team, and these are past interns that have been with us, very talented people and all our collaborators where we got the several lines from, and of course the funding, um, uh, SRF, Forever Healthy, Foster Foundation, Launch City, and Lifespan.io. I just want to draw your attention again to Keith's um, uh, talk in the morning that we are going to launch a, a Mito Mouse very, uh, project. This is for the transgenic mouse generation, and um, um, we appreciate all your support, and thank you.